Let's talk about templates. How to use templates while working with Big Picture? Is it possible? You're about to find out. This video is part of our ongoing effort to deliver the high quality learning materials for Jira, Confluence, and all of the surrounding apps. If you want to support this effort, then consider subscribing to the channel. And also, of course, you can reach out to us for paid services that we do offer in all of those areas. And now back to templates, back to big picture. So imagine this scenario, uh, which is quite common from the customers that we are working with. And I'll, give, and I'll give you a few examples. So the first one that comes to my mind is um, the company is working in a waterfall fashion, classic fashion, and there is a project manager. And this project manager knows that every time they are going to start a new project, this project is going to have a, a set number of phases within the project. And inside each of these phases, there is going to also be a set number of tasks or issues, Jira issues, that are going to have uh, dependencies between them. They are going to have certain titles and descriptions, maybe a list of sub-steps that needs, need, need to be done, right? And anytime you start a new project, you will have to manually recreate this list. Another example is, for example, from a company that is working hybrid. A little bit waterfall, a little bit agile, actually more agile than waterfall, but still you need to have some waterfall structures. So even though you have this period of time, let's call it a long sprint, right? You have this period of time during which you're working in an agile fashion and you have those agile teams, still this period has a structure inside of it, right? So every time you start a new iteration, new sprint, you need to create this hierarchy and again, um, only later on inside that hierarchy, you will have your user stories, you will have your epics, you will have your tasks, subtasks, and whatnot, right? Um, another interesting example might be, for example, coming from a testing team. Every time a testing team gets a new version of a product to be tested, they need to go through the same scenarios to backtest what has been already done previously, right? So again, they are doing it in a kind of repeatable way reporting it in a repeatable, repeatable way. So obviously what all of those scenarios have in common is that all of them can be done using templates so that you don't have to be going in and manually creating tasks after task after task, linking them together, copying and pasting the names and the descriptions and whatnot. But actually you can, with a few clicks, create a whole bunch of tasks that are ready to go and all you have to do to start working with them is maybe make sure that all of them are needed, maybe make sure that they have estimates, maybe make sure that they are uh, correctly placed in time, maybe assign people to, the, to them, but that's basically it. So whenever we are working with our customers and helping them introduce project management tools in general in the Atlassian ecosystem, be it big, big picture or something else, we put a lot of emphasis on templates because we believe that it's it's such a fundamental part of the whole process and the whole environment in general. Therefore, um, it, uh, it it becomes a core part of uh, the work that we are doing, and we believe that it helps not only to save time, not only you know it makes people happy because they have to do this manual labor a lot less but it's also amazingly good for tool adoption. So one of the things that we put a lot of emphasis on during the implementation process is the adoption of the new tool. Because for, for, for the new tool to be successful, people need to use it, people need to like it, right? And people will use it if they like it, and they will like it if it's easy, if it's simple, and it's better than the previous one, right? So if we are able to introduce some templating, that will help them save a lot of time whenever a new initiative, new project, new phase is started, it will take us miles towards the adoption of the tool, therefore a general success. So let's talk uh, in details about, or, or let's look in details about how an example of a template um, it, it, not implementation, but template usage really might look like. So the screen that you see in front of you right now is coming from Big Picture. We are inside a clean project. So there is a, there is a title here at the left top, new classic project. So we're going to start a new classic project. 
but we're not going to start it from scratch, as you already suspect, but we're actually going to use a very neat feature hidden in um, um, Big Picture called Clone Existing Scope. And over here, we already have a template waiting for us. So I'm going to use the template box that I have over here, and I'm going to put this template box into the clone project, Jira project, which I have also prepared beforehand. And uh, all I have to do basically now is hit the clone button, hit proceed, and just wait a moment for my, um, well, I wanted to say task, but really Jira issues from my template project to be copied successfully into this one. Now, this might take uh, a few seconds or this might take a few minutes because it depends on how many tickets you have inside of your template. As I mentioned before, templates can have uh, different sizes. So you can have like 15 tickets over there or you can have 500 tickets over there. So it depends on how big your project structure is and how, how much data you're going to be importing into your new project. So let me refresh the screen and let's see the end result. Um, whoop, there you go. What we can see over here is that we got a nice structure now of tasks, um, Jira issues. You, you can see that there is a hierarchy, right? There is a hierarchy maintained. So yeah, I can have parents, I, have, I can have children over there. Um, there, if I wanted to have assignees over here, I, I, I could have people already assigned to those tasks. I have the duration of the tasks over here. I have the dependency of those tasks, right? I have a period mode of those tasks. So now, of course, I can uh, change the duration of, of some of the issues over here if I want to. Uh, that's not a problem. I can uh, adjust whatever I need in this plan to make it work for my new project that I want to start right now. But all in all, Basically, you are over here with the ready set of issues to kickstart your um, new endeavor, whatever it might be. Um, so I think that's pretty awesome. And it took me what, like 15 seconds maybe, right? That, that's how quick it is. But there are some things that are worth mentioning over here. So first of all, there are several ways of doing it. So you saw me using a built-in big picture feature of cloning the existing scope. And that's definitely one of the ways uh, to, to follow. Um, but unfortunately, there are sometimes some challenges connected to using this, uh, this, this functionality in Big Picture. So it's worth knowing that there are other options available. And the problem with this functionality is that sometimes you will be getting errors. For example, when I was preparing for this video and I tried to clone the scope, it didn't work for me, right? And I had to contact uh, Yarek, who is the owner of this instance of, of Jira Cloud, and we have to, had to work out some permission uh, problems. So only then I was actually able to use the functionality to its uh, full potential. You will also have, for example, problems working with Epix. If you're using Epix and you want to use this functionality, uh, it's also going to be um, very challenging. So uh, it, th that's why, you know, other options might give you sometimes better um, better entry point to um, starting your new project rather than cloning the existing scope using Big Picture. If you want to learn more about uh, the other options, if you want to learn more about this feature uh, as well in particular, there is actually a completely separate video. We have a completely separate video regarding this topic in our Big Picture video course. So the description in the description of this video, you will find the link, you, you can check it out. Uh, you can also, of course, use the live training that we do offer for Big Picture and our project management tools in the Atlasm ecosystem. Or you can just um, talk to us and get some consulting hours and we will help you figure out what is the best way to approach um, templating in Big Picture uh, or in our project management tools. Or maybe you are also actually searching for someone who will help you make this tool work or help you implement the tool. Then, of course, I also recommend getting back to us and again, the contact address will be, I think, over here. And of course, it's also in the description of this video. So there you go. Uh, now you've learned about templates uh, using Big Picture. You've also learned that it's not all uh, good over here. And sometimes it might be a little bit tricky using the functionality. But you also now know what to look out for and you know where to search for help if you need one. If you've liked this video, then consider subscribing, giving it a like, or even posting a comment so that other users have it easier finding this content. And with that, I'm leaving you. Uh, that's the end of this video and I'll hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.